did not want to like this camera. I kind of wanted to hate it, actually. This is the Fujifilm X106, the successor to the wildly hyped X100 Mark V that you pretty much couldn't get your hands on. Like, they sold out of it. Fujifilm couldn't keep up. TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers made it just, like, stupidly popular. And I think, I think that's why when they were announcing this camera, I was like, ah, I want to hate it, but I'm curious. So I got my hands on one and I love it. Like it's, it's annoyingly good. And because of that, even the X106 is now super hard to get your hands on. I do have a, a little pro tip on getting one of these. If you're looking to pick one up, I will get to that later in the video. But I just crossed the 5,000 shot mark with this camera. Let's talk about my experience with the thing. Like what's the hype about? What's the camera about? Then we'll end with like, should you buy this camera? Is this, is this something that you should be picking up? I'll break down who it's for, like who should be buying this camera, maybe a little bit of who shouldn't be buying it, or just the limitations. I'll go over the limitations of this camera so you know that if you did buy it, it can't do certain things. It is, it is a pretty specific camera. Okay, I'm gonna finish up a few more shots down here at the beach. I might shoot up to Oceanside and get some photos up there, and then we'll go back to the office. We will talk about the X100 Mark VI and, um, yeah, why well, I've kind of fallen in love with this damn thing. Again, I, I wanted to hate this camera and I ended, up, I ended up really loving it. This camera goes everywhere with me now. the X106. What is this thing uh, and why Why have I really fallen in love with it? First, let me tell you guys about how I got my hands on one. And if you want to get your hands on one, I feel like this is your best bet because the initial run on this camera totally sold out and they are once again on pre-order. And the best way, this is for any camera really, but the best way to get a camera that's on pre-order is to find a smaller shop. Avoid the big guys because if you get on their line, you're gonna be like number 1500 and number 2000 in line. But if you guys check out MPEX, mpex.com, it's Midwest Photo out of Columbus, Ohio. They have 30 years of experience in the industry. They have gear, they do photo prints, they do all sorts of stuff through Midwest Photo. And the best part is, is that they're kind of a, a smaller shop that not as many people know about. So if you get on their list, you're gonna be way higher up on that line. You might be number 200 on their list and 2000 on you know the big two or, or three lists. And just in general, like the guys and gals at Midwest Photo, just good people. Midwest people in general, good, good people. I am from Cincinnati. Best of all though, I have worked with Midwest Photo, so if you guys use code DAVID30, buy anything more than $300 on their website, which is very easy, that's like two nice SD cards, and especially if you pre-order this, use code DAVID30 and you get $30 back uh, from, from Midwest Photo, just as a, a thanks for using the link. And again, probably your best bet at getting one of these sooner rather than, than later. Okay, what is what is the X100 Mark VI? It's basically a glorified point and shoot camera. No interchangeable lenses. We have a 23 millimeter fixed on here, but this is an APS-C size sensor, which means that that's an equivalent of 35 millimeters on a full frame camera. We have analog dials for our shutter speed, our ISO. My aperture is an aperture ring on the lens. A very like retro analog feel, but then we slide into there all the digital fun of newer camera systems. They, they basically took the, the guts out of the X-T5 and put them in here. So we have that X-Trans CMOS sensor, 40 megapixels. We've got in-body image stabilization, a large touchscreen on the back. We have a built-in ND filter in here. Four-stop built-in ND filter. Why don't my big Sony cameras have built-in ND filters if this little camera can do a built-in ND filter. But in a lot of ways, we have what looks like a retro camera, but with all the kind of modern features. Very snappy autofocus, has subject detection, eye tracking. Like, using this camera in no way feels like an old retro style, like, film clicky camera. It's almost like, like, what do they call it when they take an old car, like a 69 Mustang, but then they put 
new systems in it. So they put like an upgraded motor, they put all the digital displays and, and fancy car plays in it. Whatever that's called, it kind of feels like this, like a 69 Mustang, but with the guts of a, of a Lexus. And I kind of touched on my last video, but I've been using the, the JPEG film simulations built into this camera, which again is another reason why I think it got so popular. I feel like film photographers must really hate this. Like, like as much as I was like, ooh, you TikTokers and your dang photography as an accessory thing, I bet someone that's a film photographer probably looks at it and just goes, they don't, they don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> but it does have 20 film simulations built into the camera. So if you're shooting JPEG, you're exporting as just JPEG, you can do JPEG plus raw. You still get the raw file and then you get the JPEG version with this film simulation built in. You get 20 different film simulations. One of them isn't actually a film simulation. It's called Riella Ace. It's the new one that everyone's talking about because it's really good. They say faithful color reproduction with hard tonality suitable for various scenes. So that's the one that I've actually selected. It's the one that I've probably shot 3000 of the 5000 shots that I've taken on this camera. And then I went in and I customized a bunch of other stuff in here. Grain effect, color chrome effect, color chrome FX blue, white balance. You can go in and you can actually adjust. So I can say like red minus two, blue minus four. I can adjust all of that in my camera to give this a certain look. Go down to dynamic range, tone, curve, I can set a tone curve in camera, color, sharpness, clarity, all of that to be able to basically design a preset that you're just going to take the picture and you're going to have it. And usually it's almost done, which pulls me straight into my experience with the X100 Mark VI. This is the camera that I would shoot on the regular for my personal life. This is the a7 IV from Sony with the 35 millimeter 1.4, the Zeiss lens. It's a little bit older lens, but it's the one I picked up a long time ago. And I have loved this setup. Like this is what most of my life's photos have been captured on since this camera came out. But now, now having this, like look at the size difference between these two cameras. It is significant, significantly smaller and honestly, I kind of like the photos coming out of this even better because they're done. This was, I was shooting raw, so I would pull them in, large files, I'd have to process them through, just take longer, take up more storage, and then and then I have to edit them. I, I haven't had a time yet where I was like, oh, I don't want to have to deal with those photos. Like, I'm excited to edit these photos. This is kind of my fun, easy, playful, I get the hype, I get why beyond that it looks cool, beyond that it's like a neat little retro looking camera that is very fashionable, I get the hype of shooting a JPEG image that's already basically presetted how you want it to look and just having it done. Okay, but what about what about for you? Should you buy this camera? There is so many better alternatives out there that I think people could spend that same $1,600 on or that they could stretch on. Like for instance, the X-T5 I think is $1,600. That basically does everything that this camera does, has the same sensor, same in-body image stabilization. I think this has a better processor. Either way, that camera is basically this camera, but with interchangeable lenses. So with this camera being stuck at 35 millimeters, I don't recommend punching into 50 or 70 in camera, I would say just kind of shoot that photo and punch in later, maybe to 50, not to 70. But the main limitation of this camera is that fixed lens. There's plenty of times, even today, walking around where I saw like cool palm trees up in the distance. And I was like, oh, that looks really cool. If I had a 135 or my 70 to 200, I could reach out and kind of grab that frame that's far away from me. Plenty of times on the pier where, you know, you want to zoom into something and get that compression with the background you get a lot of nice bokeh when you do that. I uh, I couldn't do it with this. This is a 35 millimeter. I was not able to do that. You also can't go very wide, right? 35 millimeter, it's a great photojournalism lens. It's a very famous focal length for photojournalism, but there's plenty of times when I have my bigger camera and I bring my 16 to 35 along because I get somewhere and I wanna kind of capture the location and I can zoom out to 20 millimeters and it's like, oh, what a beautiful, just wide, overview shot. But what this camera is to me and what I think a lot of people that are buying it, maybe you are a photographer that runs around with big setups like this. You have to think about like, what lens am I gonna put on right now? You have to have a bag full of lenses to be able to switch between those. And you just want something simple. Like you want something that just takes you back to the simplicity of dials. I, I dial in my shutter speed. I dial in my ISO. I sit there and hand 
dial in my aperture. Even though these lenses have that, the aperture, I don't ever use the aperture ring on these cameras. I just use my dials. So if you're looking for something that is just fun, simple, takes great images, you can kind of play around with those film simulations, dial in the look of your image in camera. Man, I, I cannot recommend this thing enough for people. And again, I hate, I hate that that's true. I wanted to not like it just because it, it got TikTok famous, but now, now I kind of love it. Questions, comments on this camera, throw them down below. I will get them all answered. And, and I'll definitely do a video where I walk through like how I'm shooting this, the preset that I'm using, an edit that I use on this, and and something else that I picked up for. Maybe I'll even talk about like the gear. This is a, a sweet leather strap from Clever Supply Co. I also got their bag. Like I've got a lot of fun stuff because of this camera. There will be follow-up videos on the X100 Mark VI because this is, this is mine, not a loner. I'm keeping this one. All right, I'll see you soon. Because again, the initial pre-order sold out. Now they're on pre-order again. Ow, mother. Oh, golly, gee whizzers.